Have you ever thought about how the first moments of your day can shape everything that follows? Do you believe that your morning routine can be a gateway to divine guidance and protection? My friends, today, we are embarking on a soul-stirring journey through Psalm 5. This psalm is more than just a set of Bible verses. It's a morning prayer that when it is understood deeply and applied, it can invite God's divine guidance and protection into your life. I'll also be praying a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive these blessings. Psalm 5 is like a morning cup of spiritual coffee that wakes up our souls and prepares us for the day ahead. This psalm teaches us the power of starting our day with God, seeking His guidance, His protection, and His wisdom as we face whatever comes our way. It reminds us that even when we're surrounded by challenges or people who wish us harm, God's got our back. By connecting with God first thing in the morning, we set the tone for a day filled with His blessings, joy, and favor. This psalm isn't just poetry. It's a promise from God that when we turn to Him, especially at the start of our day, by doing this, we are arming ourselves with divine tools that will make every moment a victorious one. So, let's make Psalm 5 a regular part of our morning routine and see how God moves miraculously in our lives. Let us look closely at each verse of this psalm so that we will understand how it can be the bedrock of our mornings, leading us to walk in God's guidance and protection throughout each day. Verse 1 of Psalm 5 is a cry for God's attention, and it reads, Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. The psalmist begins with a cry to God to listen to his words and thoughts. This is more than just saying, Hey, God, are you there? Instead, it's an earnest plea for divine attention. My friends, when we wake up in the morning, before we scroll through social media or check our emails, our first focus should be to give God our undivided attention. This means setting aside time to pray, watch one of our daily Jesus devotional message, read His Word, and invite the Holy Spirit to guide you throughout the day. By giving God the first moments of our day, we set a spiritual foundation that will help us walk in His guidance and protection. Have you ever heard of the story of Hannah, Samuel's mother? In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 10 to 11, we see where she poured out her heart to God in deep anguish, and He listened. We can also begin our mornings with that same level of intentional focus and open sincerity in our prayers to God. This sets the pace for a meaningful relationship with God where we know that we're heard. The words give ear to my words, prompt us to remember that God is interested in our individual concerns, not just big global issues. You're not too small for God's attention. Never believe that your issues are too insignificant for God to listen to. He's not only the God of all creation, He's also the God of the individual. So each day, like the psalmist, let us begin our day with a cry to God to listen to our words and thoughts. Let us begin our day with prayer. Next, let us look at Psalm 5 verse 2. It is a call to the king. It says, Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my king and my God, for to you will I pray. Notice that the psalmist refers to God as both king and God highlighting the dual aspects of God's nature, His sovereignty and His divinity. When you wake up, my friends, remind yourself whom you serve, a King who rules over everything and a God who transcends all. The story of the centurion in the Gospel of Luke chapter 7, verses 1 to 10, 
resonates well with this verse. The centurion understood authority so well that Jesus marveled at his faith. In Luke 7, verses 6 to 8, the centurion sends friends to speak to Jesus, saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. This statement reflects the centurion's deep understanding of authority. He recognizes that just as he commands those under him, and they obey, so does Jesus have authority to command healing and see it fulfilled. This is why Jesus marveled at his faith. My friends, recognizing God's authority each morning gives him the rightful place in our lives and aligns our day with his divine governance. Furthermore, when we say to you will I pray, like the psalmist says in this verse, we're making a choice. With all the distractions competing for our morning attention, we make a conscious decision to direct our prayers to God. This isn't a ritual. It's a relationship. Then we move on to Psalm 5 verse 3, which is about timing and expectation. Listen to this. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. Friends, we must understand that morning is a special time. There's something about the quiet and the calm that makes it the best time to seek God. Look at the story of Mary Magdalene visiting the tomb of Jesus early in the morning. This can be found in John 20 verses 1 to 18. Her devotion and early rise led her to be the first to see the risen Lord. Starting our day with God can lead to divine encounters that we never expected. Then we see where the psalmist doesn't just pray. He looks up, anticipating an answer. This is a lesson in how to approach God with our concerns. It's one thing to ask God for help. It's another to live in expectation of His divine intervention. Friends, this attitude of expectancy can change the way you go through your day. You aren't just passively getting by. You're on the lookout for God's guidance and protection. You're expecting God's favor and blessings. Next, let us look at verses 4 to 6. These verses remind us that God despises evil. The scripture tells us, For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. Here, the psalmist highlights God's purity and righteousness. In other words, he's saying, God, I know who you are. You're holy and just. Recognizing God's character each morning is important because it helps to set the standard for our actions throughout the day. Have you ever considered the story of Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament? Their story can be found in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. They lied to the Holy Spirit and met immediate judgment. This wasn't because God is unloving, but this was because God is holy. When we start our mornings recognizing God's holiness, we're reminded to walk in integrity and righteousness. Let's remember this. Our God is a just God. He's against wickedness in all its forms. When we align ourselves with Him in the morning, we're choosing the side of righteousness, and that is the safest and most empowering place to be. Next, verse 7 of Psalm 5 talks about the place of worship. 
It reads, But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Entering into God's house speaks not just of physical churches or synagogues, but also a sacred space in our hearts where we allow God's presence. The psalmist speaks of coming with multitude of mercy and fear, emphasizing the awe and reverence we should carry when seeking God. Think about the story of Zacchaeus in Luke 19, verses 1 to 10. He was so desperate for a divine encounter that he climbed a tree. When Jesus invited himself to the home of Zacchaeus, it became a house filled with God's mercy. Each morning, invite Jesus into the home of your heart. Open yourself to his teachings, his love, and his merciful grace. Also, notice that the psalmist speaks of worship toward the holy temple. This is more than singing songs. My friends, worship is a lifestyle. Each morning, let your actions, your words, and even your thoughts be a form of worship that honors God. Romans 12 verse 1 reminds us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This verse emphasizes the importance of dedicating not just our spiritual selves, but also our physical bodies as well, to God's service and glory. This includes what was just mentioned. It's about dedicating our actions, words, and thoughts, our decisions, our choices, and our lives as a form of worship. Now, Psalm 5 verse 8 is a plea for divine direction. The scripture reads, Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. Seeking divine guidance isn't just for our benefit. It also sets a standard before those who might wish to see us falter. The psalmist asks for a straight way, a path without twists and pitfalls. Think about the disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. Though initially walking in disappointment and confusion after Jesus' crucifixion, their path became straight when they recognized the risen Christ. In our lives, we might not physically see Jesus, but when we invite him into our mornings, our paths become clearer, straighter, and easier to navigate. When you rise each morning, ask God to make his way straight before you. This is a prayer he delights to answer. It brings your life into alignment with His will, inviting His protection and guidance throughout your day. Verses 9 to 10 now turns our attention to recognizing the folly or foolishness of the wicked. Listen to the word of God, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. The psalmist doesn't ignore the reality of evil in the world. There are those whose intentions are far from noble. By recognizing this, he also highlights why aligning ourselves with God is essential. Take the story of Hakon in the book of Joshua, chapter 7. His hidden sin brought calamity upon the Israelites. It wasn't until the sin was exposed and dealt with, the people regained their spiritual footing. Likewise, recognizing and praying against the influences of wickedness sets the boundary for God's protection in our lives. And then we have Psalm 5, 
verses 11 to 12, which emphasizes the promise of joy and protection. It says, But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy, because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. What a powerful conclusion to this beautiful psalm. The psalmist sums up the benefits of putting our trust in God. Joy, defense, and favor. These aren't just abstract concepts, but daily experiences that will come when we prioritize God each morning. Consider the story of Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. They faced a great army, but chose to put their trust in God. And what was the result? Divine protection and an overwhelming victory. Their joy was unspeakable, and God's favor was evident. My dear friends, Psalm 5 is a comprehensive spiritual guide for ushering in divine protection, wisdom, and joy into your day. As we face today, let us carry the essence of Psalm 5 in our hearts. For with God as our guide and protector, we are unstoppable. If God is for us, who can be against us? Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and merciful God. Lord God Almighty, Heavenly Father, you are the author and finisher of our faith, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, you are my King and my God. I honor you and praise your holy name. Father, I thank you for the gift of life and blessings. Your love endures forever, and your mercies are new every morning. Lord, I come before you humbly with thanksgiving and praise. I am grateful for the joy of your salvation, and for your favor that surrounds me like a shield. This is the day that you have made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I ask for your forgiveness of my sins and shortcomings. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness, as I also forgive others who have trespassed against me. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every plan of the enemy to derail me or my loved ones. I declare that the plans and traps of the enemy will be brought to naught. Father, guide me in all my ways, as I lean not on my own understanding, but acknowledge you in all things. Father, I pray for your continued blessings in my life. May this day be filled with unexpected miracles, divine appointments, and opportunities that come from you alone. Lord, may there be an increase in every area of my life, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially. Lord, I am grateful that it is your desire for me to prosper and thrive in this life, even as my soul prospers in you. As I prosper, may I become a channel of blessings to others and contribute to the advancement of your kingdom on earth. I also pray for healing, Father, Touch every part of my body that needs your divine touch. Let your healing virtue flow through me. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as I lift up my loved ones to you, may they come to know your grace, your love, and your peace. Touch our hearts, Lord, and deliver us from all evil. Father, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I thank you for every heart that is humbled before you at this moment. Lord, we need your guidance. 
May you light our path and order our steps. Father, you are our shield and fortress. Cover us with your protective wings and build a hedge around us. Protect us in our coming and going. We declare that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. And we ask for your healing hand to be upon us. Father God, as we expect your blessings, we are grateful for your joy, divine guidance, favor, and protection. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.